on yesterday, I was pointing out that grace teaches us many truths that are completely contrary to the fleshly teachings of the Adam-centered life. And I find, as I hear preaching and observe uh, ministries, that there is a great emphasis placed upon Adam. A lot of preaching is the Adam-centered life, emphasizing the reformation of Adam, the making better of Adam, and, and on and on we go. Yesterday, I pointed out, first and foremost, there's no hope of reforming the old carnal man. You and I are possessed of a corrupt nature, and the corrupt nature that I have now is just as corrupt today as it was 52 years ago when I was born again. I hope that I have grown in the grace of God to the point that I can buffet the corrupt man and make war with the old man and try to beat the old man back. But the old man is there. I mean, he's there and uh, one man said, it's like I have two dogs living inside of me. And uh, the man he told that to said, well, which dog wins? And he said, the one I say sick them to. And you and I buffet the corrupt nature. Secondly, we saw yesterday when we are disappointed in ourselves, this reflects the fact that we are trusting in ourselves. I have never been disappointed with the Lord Jesus. But I've been disappointed with me many, many times. And the problem of that is that when I'm disappointed in me, that means I've been too busy trusting in me. Three, grace, when rightly received, rebukes discouragement, which is as unbelief, which is exactly what it is. Our discouragement is an area of unbelief. And you and I ought to be ashamed of ourselves at that point. We ought to be ashamed of the area of our unbelief. Number four, we have no standing before God in ourselves. So where is pride? And that's where I left the radio on yesterday. My standing before God as a born-again child of God is not in myself. It is not in my ability. The standing that I have before God is entirely in the work of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The standing I have before God, the peace I have with God, is the total result of the work of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on my behalf. So I ask the question, where is pride? Paul states, where is boasting then? And boasting has been done away with. And it is not done away with by the law. It is done away with by faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then, number five, unbelief blinds our view of divine blessings. It is not our lack of devotion. It is unbelief. Now, there are many that teach the idea that the more devoted the born-again believer is to the Lord Jesus, the more grace they will enjoy. The more devoted I am to Christ, God will give me the things that I ask for. Well, the Bible clearly states that God will grant unto us the desires of our heart. But there are many things that I have prayed about that were uh, upstanding and noble, I think good and godly things. There are doors and avenues of the ministry that I have specifically asked the Lord for that I did not receive. And it's apparent to me now at this station in my life, I'm not going to receive those things. I am not going to receive many of these things that I've asked the Lord for, these doors of opportunity that I prayed for in, in, in a younger time in my life. Now, there would be some that would say, well, Brother Ben, you were not devoted enough for God to give those things that you were asking for, for God to give those things to you. And had you been more devoted and had you been more dedicated, then surely God would have given those things to you. But that is entirely contrary to the work and the operation of the divine grace of God. You and I fail to understand that 
Romans 8.28 is in the Bible. And Romans 8.28 is the most valid governing principle in the Christian's life that I've ever read in, in the Scriptures. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. I would have assumed in my youth that by this station in my life, I would have been busy pastoring a church for 25 or 30 years by this time. But I stand before you now, a middle-aged man, and I've never pastored a day in my life. Dr. Oliver Green never pastored a church. Dr. Jack Green never pastored a church. And those men are among my mentors and among my heroes in the ministry. My grandfather, conversely, pastored 55 years. And Dr. Oliver Green was a member of my grandfather's church, as was Dr. Jack Green, a member of my grandfather's church. For me to adopt the idea that because I may have been undevoted to God is why I've never pastored a church, I think misses the point entirely. God in his sovereignty, has so orchestrated and ordained and so planned and worked in my life that it wasn't his purpose for me to pastor a church. I accept that. I take that from the good hand of God. In fact, what God has done with my life and the station God has allowed me to have in life and the place God has put me, I would not trade now for all the money and all the banks in America, I wouldn't trade the station I have in life for what God has done for me. It is unbelief that blinds our view of divine blessing. It is not our lack of devotion. Now, well, Brother Ben, if I could be more devoted, maybe God would bless me more abundantly. When I look at my life and I look at your life, God has blessed me beyond my wildest imaginations. God has given to me a door, and I can't be voted out. Now, I can have people that won't listen to the Bright Spot Hour, but I can't be voted out from this station. I can't be voted out from this position God has allowed me to have. Certainly, God has blessed us. You and I fail to recognize Romans 8.28 because so much of the ministry is uh, centered around the atom-centered life. You try harder and do better and strive harder and, and climb up the rough side of the mountain and so on. But when we fail to see God's handiwork, our faith has become blinded by unbelief. If you and I will stop and think, look back over your shoulder at the course of your life that God has, uh, the path that God has you and the door God has allowed you to have, there is no question that I can see the handiwork of Almighty God. I see the hand of God at work in my life. And that, that increases my faith. The things that I've asked the Lord to let me have that I have not received does not cause my faith to waver. I say, well, apparently it wasn't the will of God. Apparently it wasn't the mind of God. There are some things I'm praying about earnestly right now. I mean, earnestly praying about and and uh, every time uh, I have opportunity I ask the Lord about these things and there are a number of things that I'm asking the Lord for for God to allow me to have and I'm trusting the Lord that I'm going to receive them by faith but if I don't receive them I'm not going to become angry with the Lord I'm not going to become upset with the hand of God because I recognize and understand in the final analysis it is God's will be done thy will be done not mine O Lord but thine be done then I remind you lastly our desire to show devotion to Christ now I'm referring to real devotion here I, I'm not I'm not referring to to uh, uh, putting on a front the the form of godliness that denies the power thereof I'm not re referring to that at all Talk about real devotion. Did not arise from our will or desire to show devotion, but from the fact that Christ's blessing has been received while we were yet sinners, condemned, unworthy, and undevoted. 
The greatest blessing God ever gave you is the blessing of salvation. And God gave that to you while you were under condemnation. God gave that to you while you were a lost sinner. God gave you the greatest blessing you'll ever enjoy, salvation in Jesus Christ. And then I look at the course of my life and I see the hand of God, the handiwork of the Lord. I see the blessing of God and the power of God upon my life. And I recognize that I am completely unworthy to have the blessing of God upon me, the blessing of health, the blessing of a prayer life, the blessing of the Bible to read, the blessing of the open door of the bright spot hour, the blessing of the churches that I have the opportunity to go into, the blessing of a business here in Greenville, South Carolina. Surely I have received all of these things while utterly and entirely unworthy of the very least of them. I don't deserve any of these. And yet God has been kind and gracious to manifest these things to me. Now, the Lord willing, when I come back on the bright spot hour tomorrow, I want to continue and point out that we make a grave error when we preach one's devotion. We'll bring the blessing of God because that denies the fact that I already have the blessing of God in the finished work of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's been a joy to be with you today. May the Lord richly bless you until our program on tomorrow. Our post office box four, Greenville, South Carolina, two nine six zero two. This is